Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevtech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over lab three. So obviously if you've seen my other videos, this is lab three. So anyone that's new to IT help desk, IT support, desktop support, we are making our own lab and I'm showing you, I'm showing you step by step how to make your own lab. Uh, we have done installing server 2016. We have done renaming server 2016. And we also install Active Directory domain services. And now we're doing a bunch of other things. So obviously, if you're new to my channel, do IT videos or desktop support videos, tell about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you know when I go live. I greatly appreciate it, okay? All right, so let me share my screen with you and show you what I'm talking about. And today is not gonna be a long video because I wanna avoid your death. I wanna show you a small video and then we'll, we'll, we'll add into it as I'm doing these entry level um, videos, if that makes sense, for labs. So if you're brand new to IT, Stay tuned for this video, watch this video, watch the next one. These, these are gonna help you out, okay? And I'm gonna go over some of the stuff today. So, all right, screen one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my virtual box because we did install server 2016. And remember I call it server 2016 lab. So today, just for today, um, we're gonna do a little bit of, a, we're gonna do a little bit of things I wanna show you that you could do. And I'm also gonna show you a few command lines that you should know if you're trying to go for a job and help desk or IT support. This is really important because if you don't know any of these commands, um, they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions. And some of these questions you're gonna be uh, told or asked, and you're gonna be like, I don't know what to say, I don't know. You're gonna say, I don't know. You, know, you don't, you don't wanna do that. So the reason why I, 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 I make these kinds of videos, it's more informative and Instead of me jumping to what I'm doing, I'm actually explaining what I'm doing as I'm doing it, if that makes sense. Because some people are not tech savvy. Some people are not good with technology. Some people are trying to learn. Some people are trying to make their own lab. And I, I want to make it as simple as possible for everyone that's new to IT. So this is the reason why I slow down. And I take my time with these videos, if that makes sense. All right. So immediately when you're in the screen, obviously you turn on the VM. You're going to do input on the top. You're going to do control, alt, delete because control of the lead is only on the top for here for virtual box. And then you're going to log in whatever, you know, password you created. Mine was capital P password, one, two, three exclamation point. So now that I told you, because, because we did create active directory services and everything. Now I want to create a brand new account, but this is not going to be your regular account. This is going to be a help desk account, but he's going to have superpowers and he's going to have access to do everything, but obviously he's not going to have access to server manager. So that would, that would mean that I'm going to do a bunch of other things. I'm going to have two virtual machines, two more, one, one on Windows 10 for a user and one on Windows 10 for um, help desk, if that makes sense. So before I even do any of that, I have to create the accounts. I got a bunch of stuff I got to do on this one. So for today, just to not, not to confuse anyone, I'm going to show you how to create a, a new account, a new help desk account using the copy method. So basically I'm copying the admin account as that as that copy i'm going to copy and paste but using active directory copy and paste creating an account i'm not sure what i'm talking about so sometimes in an environment you do have access to server manager some places you will not if you're brand new and you're new to help desk and you're not a sysadmin or you're not any of those things obviously they're not going to give you access to this you're going to have to have some other sort of method to get into this thing which i'll go on i will go over like later on in another video so don't worry about that so what we're going to do is we're going to open up server manager or we could open up Active Directory users and computers down here. So the one thing that we call it that is containerized or maintains the users and groups and OUs, it's called Active Directory users and computers. So if someone asks you a question, what is that one thing that, that what's that feature or what's that role that server management has that containerize, containerizes and maintains uh, users, computers, and OUs? You will say Active Directory users and computers. You say that. Manager's gonna be like, okay, he knows what he's talking about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up server manager. Obviously he's already there, but I just wanna show you from beginning to end. And we're gonna hit on tools and we're gonna hit Active Directory users and computers. So right here, we have a bunch of user accounts. If you wanna create, I'm gonna go over a lot of stuff today, by the way. So if you wanna create a user account, you literally right click on, on users and you basically click new user. And then you make a brand new user. We're not going to do that today. We're going to use the copy method, which I'm going to show you what it is. But before I go into that, I want to show you some things you could do on Active Directory users and computers because these things might be on an exam. So say, for example, um, you're looking for guest user, right? This guest user. So I'm going to right click on computers and I'm going to hit fine, right? And I'm going to type guest. 
and I can't find guests for some reason. Why can't I not find guests? And I, I know this is pretty obvious for some people, but for some people, it's not obvious. So what you want to do is you always want to go on the right hand side over here and you always want to click an entire directory. So a lot of people, what they do is they, they search on computers when the user is in users, not computers, if that makes sense. So they're searching the wrong way. So what you want to do is you want to search the entire directory. If you're searching for someone, always search the entire directory because they might be part of a different folder or they might be part of a different OU. You don't know that. So best to search on entire directory. Everyone that's brand new to IT, they always make that mistake. They always search by users, users folder only. You don't want to do that. You want to search the entire directory just in case. And now immediately you could tell that the user is right there. You double click on him and that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. And I want to show you something really cool right now. So what you want to do is I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to go back to kevtech.com. Um, I'm going to click on view and I'm going to click advanced features. Now it looks a lot different. Now you see it's a lot different. And I, I, I enable that for a specific reason. I'm going to show you why I enable that. So now I'm going to go back to computers. I know you're supposed to search from kevtech.com. I'm not going to do that. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm going to search on computers again. I'm going to hit fine. And I'm going to type guess again. Obviously, obviously he's not going to show up. So type guess and guess is not going to show up, right? So what you'll do is the whole entire OU, entire directory. And now you know it's right here, right? So why did I enable advanced features? I enable advanced features because if you enable advanced features, it will literally tell you what part of OU they're part of or what folder or what subfolder they're part of on Active Directory users and computers. How do you verify that? You literally click on guess. Um, and you click on object. It's all in the top right hand. So this one, this one that says object, you click on that. And it's right there. It says kevtech.com. Let, let me see if I could close out of this. There we go. So it says kevtech.com. Kevtech.com is part of users slash guests. So if you go into users, guests is right there. So if you enable advanced features, it will tell you where they're part of, or what part of, what what they're, what, where they're at. Basically, it tells you all that information right there. So this is really important to know because this may be a interview question, like how do you search for using Active Directory using computers? Obviously, I will search the entire directory. I won't search by the domain because the user might be in a different folder or, or a different location, and I might not be able to find that user. And it asks you, like, you search the entire directory and the person is not there. What would you do? I will just create a brand new account. If, if, there, if the user is not there, I just create a brand new account, if that makes sense. So that that's pretty much it for that. I just wanted to show you that real quick because it's super duper important um, because it's just super duper important. It's very, very important for for anyone to know what that is. It's very important. And I know, I know I'm going to keep saying that over and over again because I want you to, I want you to uh, get that in your head, get it stuck in your head. Yeah, that's very important in IT because you're going to be asked these interview questions. You don't know how to answer them. If you don't know, if you don't know what Active Directory uses the computers is, or you don't know how to search a user on Active Directory, then you're going to have a hard time applying for a help desk job because a lot of these jobs expect you to know that if you're doing help desk or IT support, they expect you to know how to search a user on Active Directory using the computers. And a lot of people uh, mess up. Like they mess up. Like literally, they, they don't search the entire directory. They just search one folder. And this is right I'm going over this. I'm trying to tell you to do this in your lab environment so you can learn from it, if that makes sense, all right? And um, next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show you one more thing. Then after that, uh, and then after that, I'll, I'll create the account. So next thing I want you to do is on your lab environment, I want you to go into Windows Administrator. I want you to go into um, Active Directory Administrator Center, right? So we're gonna click on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna click on kevtech.local. So this is my domain services, obviously. And then I'm gonna click on enable recycle bin. And I'm gonna hit okay. So it says your recycle bin will not function reliably until all the domain controls have been replicated. Okay, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna hit that. That's totally fine. And then it's already enabled, I guess. So I mean, yep, 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 it's fine. Probably have to refresh it, which is totally fine. So what I did was I just enabled the recycle, but it takes a few minutes to replicate. It, you know, now it's not grayed out anymore. It was grayed out before. 
but it takes a few minutes to replicate. Now it's there, so it's called deleted object. So if you ever deleted something by accident, you may wanna enable um, recycle bin on your um, domain center or administration center, if that makes sense. So I know this is too, this is kind of advanced, but it's good to know. It's just, it's just a little thing you may wanna know if that makes sense, all right? So last two things we're gonna do is we're gonna go over CMD commands, the simple CMD commands that you should know if you're brand new to IT. And uh, the other thing is creating the accounts. I'm gonna create the account first and we'll go over CMD commands and then we'll wrap it up with this video. And then the next video tomorrow will be about Windows 10, adding adding a user on Windows 10, adding computer to a domain, all that good stuff, okay? So I wanna take it one step at a time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into administrator. We're gonna right click on it. We're gonna hit copy and then we're gonna type help desk. So I'm gonna do help desk. The login for this one is gonna be help desk. So I'm doing automation, what does that mean? So basically, let me just close out for this for a second. Basically, I wanna copy this account on the, this is building administrator computers and domains, right? And he is part of domains, domain users, enterprise admin, global, it's part of all these all these crazy groups, this superpower admin, right? He's the admin, I'm logging in, I'm logged in right now, it's this admin account, if that makes sense. So what I wanna do is I wanna replicate that account without killing myself, if that makes sense. Like, well, what do I mean by that? I don't wanna like, if I'm gonna, if 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 you're a brand new IT person, right, and you have one account, you have one account, right, that's already created on, on Active Directory users of computers and users, are you gonna be here? Are you gonna sit here and you're gonna keep creating the account again and again and again, over and over again, like like 10, 20 times, 40 times? No, you're not gonna do that. That's just too much work. Why would you do that when you have the option called copy? So you could just hit the copy button right over here and you type the name of the account that you're trying to create, if that makes sense, and you're replicating that account over and over again. So as opposed to you, you know, creating a brand new account over and over again, you, you could literally do a copy function, you know? And I'm gonna show you what happens. So now if you go here, now he's, op now he's part of the same groups, look at that. Just to save you, to save you time, like, do you imagine me like what like me like I'll show you look like, this was this is what this is what, what you would this is what you would have done if you didn't hit the copy button. I'll show you. You would have right click on new user, you would have done new user, you would have done let's just do help desk too, right? You would have done help desk too. You would have hit next. You would have done help desk to password never expires. You would have done password one, two, three, exclamation point. Password one, two, three, exclamation point. And then I have to go here. I have to click on the user. He's not part of anything. And I have to go into the other member's account and I have to start copying everything over and over again. So why would I, I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna delete this one, right? So let me stop sharing for a second. Like, why would I, why would I do that? Why would you wanna do that? You wanna work, you gotta work smarter not harder. Does that make sense? Work smarter, not harder. Why would you do that? Why would you create the account continuously and then add those groups to it? Instead of doing that, if you have 20 accounts of the same company and the same department, just hit the copy button and then you just copy all the users like that. And then they're all, they're all part of the same group already. You don't have to kill yourself if that makes sense. That's what I would do. You know, you know I'm trying to make your life easy. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So that's literally what I would do if that makes sense. So Go back to this. So what I what I would do is the next thing I want to do is I want to show you CMD commands and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. So the important CMD commands you should know if you're brand new to IT. Um, and I'm gonna go to the bottom left hand side, and I'm gonna type CMD, and I'm gonna do IP config. That's the first one. So the first one you need to know is IP config because a lot of a lot of times you work with a network admin, you work with a sysadmin, you work with desktop support level two, or someone in your job. Can you give me the IP address of that computer so I can remote in? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Uh, it's 10.0.2.15, you know? That is my IP address. And then if you wanna go further, you do IP config slash all. And if you scroll up, and if you scroll up, it says DCP server is 10.0.2.2. And it tells you DCP server is enabled. Yes, so what does that mean? DHCP is enabled. So that means it's grabbing an IP address from dynamic host configuration protocol. So it's grabbing an IP from my DHCP server, which is my files router or my router from my job, from not my job, but from my, um, you know, from my service provider. I have files Verizon. So it's grabbing an IP address 
from that server in files or Verizon, if that makes sense. Obviously, if it says DHCP enable and it says no on it, then that would mean that it's a static IP, which is a static IP, which you assign to it statically. And how do you do that? You literally will go into the start menu. You will type control panel. That's like the easiest way to do it. You go into view network status and tasks, change adapter settings, hit the internet button right over here. You click on properties, you click on IPv4, and then you manually put the IP address right over here. You put all the, and you hit okay, okay, okay. So obviously it's a static IP. Then you would you would you would say it's a static IP. When we use a static IP, um, some computers might have it. A lot of printers have static IP. So if you work in an IT environment, most of the time they put a static IP on a printer because the, the, the what happens is the, the IP changes over time, and then you can't print to that printer anymore. So why would you want to add that printer over and over again? Instead, you make your life easy and you make it into a static IP. You keep the same IP for that printer, that IP that you have, which is 10 dot whatever. So the, the IP doesn't change and the user could print forever, if that makes sense. So as opposed to actually, you know, going into there and, 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 and adding the printer again and again and again, keep it as a static IP. The technician or the, the, the sysadmin will give you a static IP. You put it on that printer. It doesn't change over time and it stays like that. And they're able to print forever. So that's it. That's pretty much it. And then the, the next command is net space use. This will tell you the share drives that uh, a person is connected to. So like, like, say for example, you're getting a phone call about someone has access to the Z drive, the G drive, the J drive, and you don't know what, what that means or what, what does that mean? Like you, you could go on their computer, you type net use, and it will tell you all the share drives that they're incorporated with and that they're a part of and what they have mapped on their computer. So it'll be net use. The next command that I wanna show you, this is a super duper important command. This is for help desk level one. You could do this on any computer as long as you have admin rights to CMD, okay? The next command is net use, net user, and you type the domain. So for me, it's gonna be help desk. We just created a help desk account. And I'm gonna type slash domain. This will tell you when the password expires. This will tell you when the password was last set. This will tell you when the password is changeable. This will tell you if they're part of certain groups. So he's part of admins, group creator, enterprise admins, domain admins, schema admins, domain admins. So this will tell you this little command right here. Just remember this command. It's a super duper important command if you're help desk. And they'll ask you this in a job interview. Like, how do you check if a, if a password is about to expire? What CMD command would you run in order to, to see that, if that makes sense? And you say, oh, I don't know. You can't say, I don't know. It's a CMD command. So it's net space user space the domain the domain user account so it could be help desk could be administrator um, space slash domain so you type that in in any of your jobs this is universal this is not something i made up on the fly this is universal for every computer that has server 2016 or server 2019 that's on a domain you could type this in if you have admin rights to do it you type net space user space the name of the domain it could be peter it could be tracy it could be uh, William, whatever the username account is on Active Directory, users and computers, you put it in there, slash space, slash domain. And it will tell you. And here it would actually show you if the password is expired as well or if the, if the account is locked out. There's a way to do it on PowerShell as well. So that's it. That's pretty much it for today. We created the account. Um, tomorrow we'll do some Active Directory stuff, add some computers to the domain. It should be fun. This is for people that are brand new to IT. Hopefully I made this video, hopefully this video makes sense for you, if that makes sense. Hopefully this, is, this helps someone that's brand new to IT. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Um, this is part three of my videos. Part four is coming up tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. All right, take care. Peace. Have a good Saturday. Bye.